Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, which is short form CIN. It is a pre-malignant transformation and dysplasia of the squamous cells on the surface of the cervix. So this cervical intraepithelial neoplasia is a pre-malignant lesion of the cervix before it transforms into cervical cancer. The pathology it is due to an integration of viral DNA into the basal cells of the cervical epithelium in the transformation zone, and later on causing immortalization of the basal cells and rapid turnover of the cells within the epithelium, causing immaturity of cells within the epithelium. It is associated with human papilloma virus, HPV, and the high-risk types that cause cervical intraepithelial neoplasia will be HPV type 16, 18, 31, and 33. These are the four more common types, which are detected at a higher grade of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. So there are three grades of CIN, depending on the degree of cytological atypia, and also depending on the thickness of the epithelium involved. So the type 1 is the mild degree of dysplasia, Type 2, moderate dysplasia, and type 3, there will be severe dysplasia and carcinoma in situ. So for type 1, the epithelial thickness is occupying around one third of the epithelium, whereas type 2, it occupies two thirds of epithelium, and type 3 occupies almost the whole of the epithelium. And you can see in the picture, there are the dysplastic changes occupying one third, two third, and the whole thickness of the epithelium in each grade. So the CIN type 1, the low grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, it may regress without treatment. Whereas type 2 and type 3, they are high grade lesions. They are likely to persist and progress. And overall, the average time for CIN type 3, which is also a carcinoma in situ, the average time for it to progress to invasive cervical cancer is around 10 to 15 years. So there is possibility of becoming cervical cancer. Moving on to the treatment for this cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, the aim is to effectively eradicate the CIN and make sure after treatment the smears are negative. So for low-grade CIN, which is the CIN type 1, it may regress spontaneously in up to 60% of the cases. The rate of changing to malignancy is very low, but if compared to normal women without CIN, there is still a 10 times higher risk to have malignancy change. And the treatment for this low-grade CIN would be conservative management, which includes a close follow-up with colposcopy and cytology six months after initial diagnosis, and cryotherapy, where the cervix is frozen with liquid nitrogen. Whereas the treatment for high-grade CIN includes excision using loop diatomy, also known as large loop excision of the transformation zone, LLETZ, where a diatomy wire loop is used to remove a portion of the cervix, which includes the transformation zone, with the area of CIN. The excision will need to be up to around 10 mm deep, and it lasts for 15 minutes under local anesthesia. So it is a quick and clinically effective and, uh, method and the specimen available for histopathological assessment. However, there are some complications that might occur, such as bleeding, infection, or preterm delivery in next pregnancy due to cervical weakening. Another option is to do corn biopsy, which the procedure includes cutting away a portion of the cervix under general anesthesia and getting a specimen. However, there are also complications where the patient might develop cervical stenosis or cervical incompetence, which may affect future pregnancies causing miscarriage due to cervical incompetence. So for follow-up, the patient will need regular cervical smears six monthly after treatment and yearly for 10 years period. So that's all for this video. Thank you.